Good morning, Math 30-2s. Um, today we're going to look at some horizontal and vertical shifts. So what I'm going to want you to do is read through page 377 here and check out what it says about horizontal shifts to start with. So you got partial graph of sine x and cos x. Diagrams 1 and 2 below show the graph of sine x after it's been shifted, power 6 radians, and power 3 radians to the left. So right up above here is sine x. If I shift it pi over 6 units to the left, I get graph and diagram 1. This is pi over 6. So if I shift it left pi over 6, we're at here, negative pi over 6. If I shift it left pi over 3 radians, we're at this graph right here, diagram 2. So pi over 3 radians, here's 1 pi over 6, here's 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3 negative, and that's where sine would start. So sine used to start at 0 going up. Now we shifted it pi over 3 units to the left. Now it's starting at negative pi over 3 to the left and going up. All right. If we look at continuing to shift it to the left, we're eventually going to get the graph of cosine x. So if you look at cosine x, the top of cosine x starts at 1, and sine x has 1 after pi over 2 units. So if each of these is a pi over 6, and this is another pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, which is a pi over 3, and then 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2, well, one shift pi over 6 units gives me this one. Another shift pi over 6 units gives me diagram 2. I shift 3 times by pi over 6, or 3 pi over 6 is a pi over 2. If I shift sine left 3 pi over 6, or pi over 2, I get cosine x. So this question is, horizontal shift is often referred to as a phase shift. The question is, how far to the left do we have to shift this? We have to shift it pi over 2 to the left before we get cosine x. All right. So we call horizontal shifts phase shifts. Note, in this course, we're not required to determine the size or the direction of the phase shift. Only recognize that it is a phase shift occurring. So we'll talk about more later in this lesson. Let's look at vertical shifts now. Diagrams 3 and 4 below show the graph of sine x after vertical shifts of 1 unit up and a half unit down. So 1 unit up, that's a diagram 3. Half a unit down, that's diagram 4. Notice that the amplitude and the period of the graphs are not affected. Amplitude is still 1 for both these graphs. Period is still 2 pi. It takes 2 pi units to complete a full cycle. So amplitude is 1. Period is still 2 pi for both these graphs. The vertical shift represents the middle, median. Median means middle of the graph. So we can find the middle of the graph by drawing a midline or a median line or a line of equilibrium. And this midline of the graph is of a periodic function is an imaginary horizontal line. We draw it in as a dotted line sometimes, and it splits the graph exactly in half. The vertical shift describes the position of the midline. All right. So in the graphs of sine x and cos x on the previous page, the midline is the x-axis. Therefore, the equation for the midline is y equals 0. The midline will be a horizontal axis if there is no vertical shift. So if there's no vertical shift, then the midline's the x-axis, or the equation y equals 0. If there is a vertical shift, then the midline will be above the horizontal axis if the shift is up. Up is above the axis. Below means there's a vertical shift down. So for diagrams 3 and 4 above, draw the midline for each graph and determine the equation for each graph. So, diagram 3, if I want to draw the midline, let's find the middle of this graph. 
the highest point it gets to is 2 and the lowest point it gets to is 0. So halfway between 2 and 0 is 1. So there's a midline of this graph. That's our midline. And it's a horizontal line that so has the equation y equals, and it goes through 1. y is always 1. So there's the equation in the middle of that graph. Midline of the second graph, lowest point it gets to is negative 1.5. The highest point it gets to is positive 1.5. Sorry, positive 0 0.5. So halfway between those, that's two units. You go down one or up one. So down one from a half is negative a half. Up one from negative 1.5 is negative 1.5. So here's the midline of this graph. That's that midline. And again, it's an equation of y equals, and it's down half a unit, negative 0.5. Read in the phase shift and the midline. For the graph of y equals a sine b x plus c add d, where a is greater than 0, meaning it's a positive value. a is greater than 0, a is a positive value. A phase shift has not occurred if the y-intercept of the graph is on the midline and the graph increases to the right from that point. If that doesn't happen, then a phase shift has occurred. So we have to figure what the midline of the graph is. And sine always starts middle of that graph going up. All right. <clears throat> so example two. In the diagrams of sinusoidal function y equals sine x has been graphed with a thin line. Determine if the sinusoidal function graph with a thick line differs from the graph of y equals sine x by any of these four things. A change in amplitude. A change in period, so that's stuff from last day, or today whether it's been a vertical shift or a horizontal shift, if any of those things happen. Note, there may be more than one change involved. So, sine x is the thin line. Obviously, the amplitude has changed. This graph goes much higher and lower, so there's a change in amplitude. period for the original sine function is 2 pi. Looks like this thing starts right here and it continues on to right there. So no change in the period. Horizontal phase shift and vertical shift. So let's figure out what the midline of this graph is. The highest point here is 3 and the lowest point is negative 6. Maybe it's negative 7 even might be negative 7. So from 3 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is 10 units. So from high to low is 10. Take half of that. The amplitude is 5. So if I go down 5 from the top or up 5 from the bottom, we'll get the middle of the graph. So there's the middle of our graph. There's our midline. All right, 5 down from 3 is negative 2. 5 up from negative 7 is negative 2. So the middle of the graph is at y equals negative 2. So the midline has changed. There's a vertical shift. It's actually been shifted 2 down because the equation is y equals negative 2. And let's see if there is a phase shift. We're told the sign should start... The middle of the graph, we just found the middle by doing the midline. The middle of the graph, and it should go up. And yes, sine does start in the middle of the graph and goes up, so there is no horizontal phase shift. There's only a vertical shift down and an amplitude change. Part B. Let's see if there are any changes here. The thin line is sine x. Amplitude, highest point, lowest point is the same, so there's no amplitude change. The period of sine x is 2 pi. The period of this graph looks to be much, much quicker. So there's been a change in period. It doesn't ask us what they are, just a period change, just to recognize which ones have changed. So no amplitude change, but there has been a period change. 
find the midline of the graph. So if the amplitude is the same, the midline of the graph is the x-axis. So there's been no vertical shift. The midline is y equals 0. No vertical shift. But let's see if there's been a phase shift. <clears throat> Sine should start in the middle of the graph, which is the x-axis, going up. Going up. That's right there. So ideally, sine started right here. The little thin line started there. The new graph starts right here. So there's definitely been a phase or horizontal shift. We don't have to reckon, we have to, don't have to determine what the size or the direction. We just have to notice that there is a phase shift occurring. All right. So I'd like you guys to right now do questions one and two. We'll stop the recording. After we give you about 10 minutes, then I want you to come back and restart this recording. And we will continue on with the rest of the notes. All right, exploring horizontal and vertical shifts given the equation. So we looked at the graphs to figure out vertical and horizontal shifts. Remember, horizontal shifts can also be called phase shifts. Well, let's look at the equation. All right, y equals sine of x plus c. Consider the functions sine x, sine of x plus pi over 2, and sine of x minus pi. Use your graphing calculator in radian mode. Graph them and state these things. So I'd like you to graph those on your calculator right now and see what shows up. All right, on your graphing calculator, here's what we should have shown up. I did sine x in blue, sine of x plus pi over 2 in green, and sine of x minus pi in red. So if you haven't got those graphed, graph them now. Pause this and then graph them. We're now going to state the amplitude and period of each graph. Amplitude and period for each graph. So for sine x, the blue graph, the amplitude, still 1, and the period is still 2 pi. From here it starts and it finishes, that's 2 pi units. For the green graph, sine of x plus pi over 2, the amplitude, highest is 1, lowest is negative 1, so the amplitude is still 1. And the period uh, starts at the highest point at at 0 and gets the highest point again at 2 pi. So the period is still 2 pi. And finally, the sine x minus pi uh, starts at the middle going down, and that happens again after 2 pi units. So the period is 2 pi, and the amplitude is still 1. So none of these graphs have changed their amplitude or changed their period. Part C says, please determine the size and direction of the phase shift for each graph. So if I look at the graph of y equals sine of x plus pi over 2, the green graph, sine normally starts in the middle right here and goes up. Well, the green graph starts in the middle right here and goes up. That graph has been shifted 1, 2, 3 pi's over 6, or pi over 2 units, to the left. So this is shift left pi over 2 units. That's what's happened in the green graph. We've shifted the graph of sine x left pi over 2. 1, 2, 3 ticks. That's 3 pi's over 6. Every tick's a pi over 6, and 3 pi over 6 in simplest form is pi over 2. What about the graph of sine of x minus pi? Sine x starts the middle of the graph going up. This graph starts the middle of the graph here going up. And that is a shift of pi units to the right. So if you write that equation, y equals the sine of x minus pi, that's been shifted pi units right. Okay? So we've taken sine x and shifted it pi units to the right. That's what happened with the red graph. All right, to complete these notes, uh, we'll have to start the second video recording called Part B. So this one's done, and we'll do the second part if you do Part B of these notes. Uh, I've only got 15 minutes of video time, so we're going to start the next part soon.